Now let's talk about sharing analysis and uh, talk about desktop uh, software and services. Um, you know, lots of software can make maps, let's be honest. Not a lot of software can make great maps, bringing your organization's information to life. ArcGIS can. Um, we're helping you here by creating uh, map templates downloadable on the resource centers uh, for domains like local government, like what Tim talked about and we'll be talking about this week, uh, water, wastewater, telecom, and others. Uh, these templates, uh, they ground the community um, uh, and they um, will continue to grow. So take advantage of those. And um, ArcGIS is actually a lot more than just making great maps. It's advanced spatial analysis everywhere. Um, geoprocessing provides the framework to execute and share uh, advanced spatial analysis through geoprocessing services and geoprocessing packages, brand new. Uh, so I'd like to introduce Lauren Rosenshine from the geoprocessing and analysis team to demonstrate this. Lauren? Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I'm really excited to show you guys some of the things that we're working on that are going to make sharing analysis a lot easier in 10.1. Um, today, I'm playing the role of a crime analyst in San Francisco, and I've been asked by my managers to create some tools that allow them to create hotspot maps of crime in our area. Now, as a GIS analyst, this is the easy part for me, creating a, a good tool that does advanced spatial analysis. So in Catalog, I've already created um, this tool in Model Builder, and we can take a look at what it does. It allows the user so to select from their crime points by location, a time of day, and also a time of the year that they're interested in, then runs a hotspot analysis and creates a hotspot surface. It's a pretty simple tool. And we can take a look at what that tool will look like for the end users that I'll share it with inside of desktop. It lets them choose a start date and an end date, um, a time of day that they're interested in. And when I draw on the map, We'll only be analyzing the crimes that happen on the east side of San Francisco, but also only analyzing the crimes that happened at night. So I hit OK, and it's running that hotspot analysis, it's creating that surface, and ultimately showing me, the, helping me understand the patterns of violent crime in San Francisco. Now, the traditionally hard part is sharing this analysis with others. Um, and the decision makers in my organization want me to not only share it with other GIS professionals, but with a much broader audience, themselves and also the, the general public. So to do that, from the su successful result in my analysis window, we've got a new option. That's the option to share. I can share it as a geoprocessing package, which is a really great way to share with other GIS professionals working in a GIS environment. But a lot more relevant to this audience is that I can turn it into a geoprocessing service. Now, geoprocessing services are nothing new in 10.1, but what is new is that we're doing a lot of work, we've done a lot of work, that's going to make it a lot easier for an analyst to create a service so that you'll know, as a developer, when you get it, that that GP service is going to work. Um, this wizard is going to look really familiar. The experience for creating services and sharing maps and analysis is the same throughout, the, throughout ArcGIS. So whether you're creating a map service or geoprocessing services, you're going to have the same sharing experience. Choose a server where I want to put this service. Give it a name. Choose where on that server I want this service to live. And then I've got some basic options here, and there are some unique options for geoprocessing service, things like general service parameters, how I want that tool to execute, um, some options about the tool inputs and outputs. I also definitely want to give it a summary and um, some tags because I want people to be able to find this tool that I'm creating. And I just hit publish. Now, when I hit publish, we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that we are eliminating user error. We're doing things like packaging up the data and any custom scripts or models and putting them on the server where the service is going to live. We're also doing things like checking for errors, which you probably noticed that the window popped up. We're doing that now for geoprocessing services, too. So we're doing a lot of things to make sure that the services that I create as a GIS analyst are going to work for you as a developer. So what does this mean for you as a developer? Well, I sent the URL for this service to one of the web developers on my team, and he built me a really awesome Silverlight application. So first, let's take a look at that code in Visual Studio. 
If you're already using geoprocessing services in your web applications, this is going to look really familiar to you because we haven't changed at all the way that you'll access those geoprocessing services from inside your web applications. You'll see we're accessing that GP service, that URL. We're setting some parameters based on some interactive user input from the web app. And ultimately, we're running the tool. Now, if this doesn't look familiar to you because you're not using geoprocessing in your web applications, really is a powerful way to turn your web applications into more than just mapping applications, to give, give advanced spatial analysis and GIS capabilities to non-GIS us users through simple-to-use web applications. Um, and there's a lot of help out there, a lot of examples on the resource centers. Here we're at the Silverlight Resource Center. I mean, we've got a, a bunch of examples of different geoprocessing services, including the, the code for how to access them in your web applications. We've got those same examples for Flex and for JavaScript, too. I think the best way to see why you should think about using geoprocessing services inside your web applications is to see how powerful it can be in a, in a real one. So this is the Silverlight app that my web developer built for me. And it lets decision makers and the general public take a look at that crime data understand it using a time slider, looking at different times of the year, different times of the day, and ultimately run that geoprocessing service, that advanced spatial analysis through this really simple to use web application designed for a non-GIS user. Another great thing about having this in a web application is that now we have access to a ton of other services that are being provided by Esri and other organizations all over the world. In this case, when I click on the results of that geoprocessing service, we're accessing Esri's business analyst online services to get a demographic report of that hotspot of violent crime. So here we can see that in this hotspot, we've got a low average household income, we've got high unemployment rates, and high high school dropout rates. So some potentially related causes in this area. So we can really start to understand not just the patterns, but also some potentially related causes all through this simple web application. So in 10.1, we've worked really hard to make sure that it's a lot easier for GIS professionals to share analysis with other GIS professionals through the geoprocessing package. It also made it a lot easier for GIS professionals to share with a much broader audience with all of your help in those great web applications through the simplified geoprocessing service.